Hello, Lee Summit R7 School District. Mary Technus, my name is John. I'm an instructional technology specialist. I'm joined by Christy Cantrell, instructional technology. And John, it's Techmus. It is Techmus, Krista. You have forgotten a key piece to Techmus. First gift of the year. Thank you so much. My Techmus cap. Wow, I can be just like you. Absolutely. I'm so happy you're joining us. That's wonderful. Perfect fit. Perfect fit every time. Perfect fit. Hey, thank you, Krista. Well, Merry Techmas to each and every one of you out there, whether you're joining us live for the webinar or if you're watching this recording. Techmas 2022 promises to be the Techmas event of the year. So uh, today we are focusing on Edpuzzle. You'll see it right up there in the ornament on our screen. Edpuzzle is an incredible tool. Uh, and Edpuzzle actually harkens back to the first Techmas in Lee Summit R7. Tell me a story, John. This isn't the thing that we've been doing forever. In fact, the first Techmas, I feel like I need a rocking chair. Right. Uh, the first Techmas uh, of 2020, right? It was 2020, moving into 2021. Um, the district had gone virtual and a lot of people were teaching. Everybody was teaching. Students were learning from home in the weeks leading up to holiday break. And so uh, out of that, Technus was born. And uh, shout out to Kyle Pace, our then director at the time, who brought the idea of Technus to us. And then um, our team of three at the time kind of helped Technus come to life through some Google drawings with templates and resources. And we had a song that was uh, the 12 Days of Technus, where we revealed one of these brand new tech tools that was purchased during that crucial time of virtual instruction uh, for the district. And it was not just um, building purchase where this building has this tool and this building does not. Instead, it was an equitable purchase where the whole district, all teachers, all students get to benefit from these really cool ed tech tools. And this year with our theme of elevating the essentials, we were really building upon some of those tools that were purchased at that time. And I, I told my daughters that we were doing technus last night and they go, uh, Dad, what are, you, what are you giving them? And I said, we're giving the people knowledge. <laughs> So, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us for some knowledge on Edpuzzle. Uh, Krista, I keep throwing this term out there, Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle. Can you tell the people what it is? Absolutely. Edpuzzle is a video tool where you can take any videos that you have and turn them into a formative assessment for your students. It allows you to ask specific questions, get feedback from your students, gives you some accountability with what they're doing and what they're learning. It makes it pretty easy for your students to learn. We're awesome. gonna look at that a little bit later. Awesome. Yeah. Um, one of the big reasons that we purchased Edpuzzle as a district is uh, one, that it's integrated with our learning management system, Schoology. Schoology is uh, where we house all of our teaching, all of our learning for, um, for teachers, for students. Uh, it's where parents can view digital work students are producing. And so uh, the fact that Edpuzzle integrates seamlessly, it's one of the best integrations that I've seen even to this point um, because it not only like when your kids click on that video to watch it, it sends their user information to Edpuzzle. So you don't ever have to have them create an account. So that's called rostering. And then also uh, Edpuzzle will take the grade that that student has earned on their uh, watching of the video and answering of questions. And it puts it back inside the Schoology gradebook for you. That's called grade passback. And so Edpuzzle has both of those things, making it a pretty awesome integration. And at that time, uh, when uh, Director Kyle Pace went ahead and uh, I remember sitting there going, we're going to actually do this. We're going to integrate it for the whole district because teachers had their own integration set up at that time. And it was a lot of work on the teacher end. We integrated it for the district. And since then, it's like so easy, nobody believes it. Right. How easy the integration is. So uh, that's why Edpuzzle. And since then, Edpuzzle's continued to get more awesome. They're telling us that starting the new year, should I tell them this or do you want to tell them this? Good for it. Starting the new year, Edpuzzle has an exclusive partnership with YouTube, right? So if you show a video through Edpuzzle, there will be no ads, right? Wait, Ad no ads? No ads. No ads. No, no, no ads, no ads. It's technos. No ads. All right. So, uh, no ads. No, no. No. So there's an exclusive partnership with YouTube mm -hmm. to where when you can bring in that video from YouTube, it'll play for your students with some questioning in there, getting some feedback and responses from them with no advertisements. No advertisements. Um, Thank you, Krista. Yep. And uh, the other cool part about this is that Edpuzzle has continued to get more awesome and they are now producing original content. So no longer do you just have to take and find videos on 
uh, with their exclusive partner YouTube um, or videos that maybe you've created. Instead, now Edpuzzle is producing the video themselves. They are writing questions themselves and uh, they're calling these Edpuzzle originals. We're gonna show you more of those today as we get going. So with that, Krista, uh, how might one get started in Edpuzzle and R7 uh, if maybe they're brand new to this awesome Technos tool? Absolutely. One of the reasons why you want to get the LSR7 Edpuzzle Pro account also is because it connects you to other teachers in the district and how their videos are there. You can borrow them, you can edit them, you can assign them to your students. So not only are you creating content or pulling it from YouTube, you can see what other teachers across the district are doing. So to activate your LSR7 Edpuzzle Pro account, John, do you want to I, you know what, I, that link over there? I do want to do that, Krista. And um, yes, I do want to do that. Here I would love that. You got um, it. So for the first time, if you click on this link that gets you your LSR7 Edpuzzle Pro account, it will send you to the site and it'll have you sign in with Google. Lost it there. It'll have you sign in with Google. So you're able to go ahead and hit the sign in button, sign in with Google. It'll also send a pass back to your email that has you verify it through there just to make sure all your buttons and um, settings are connected. No. I don't even know. Um, once you do that, you now have your LSR7 and Puzzle Pro account. We'll look at the dashboard in a little bit to see what that looks like. The other one is you're going to want to get the Ed Puzzle extension. And let me share my screen here, John. Please do. Thank you. So as Krista's sharing her screen, um, that takes a little bit, and that's always a little bit tricky for people who are new to Edpuzzle because they'll get into Edpuzzle with their Google sign-in, and they're so excited to get going that they forget to go back and check email. And I know when I've been training groups of teachers that as we go to integrate Edpuzzle in Schoology, uh, and get that set up for them the first time, that's always a step we forget is looking for that email that says verify your account. So when it's brand new, that's your opportunity to do that. All right, um, don't forget to go back and verify your Edpuzzle account once it's created. Okay, sharing my screen, are we seeing the screen? Not yet, but. Okay, so in just a second, we'll drop the link in there. Here goes my screen, drop the link in there for you. You're gonna to wanna to go get the Edpuzzle extension from the Chrome Web Store. So clicking on it there in the chat brings you up to the Chrome Web Store. You over here on the right-hand side will click install and give it all the permission to signing in with your Google, Google account. And then eventually you will see it up here in your extensions. If it's not showing up in your extensions, click it on the gray puzzle piece and it actually shows you all of the extensions that you have on your device. And if it is one that you're wanting to show up there all the time, you can pin it. So I'm making it the blue push pin and it's gonna live up there in a little bit. Why, right there. why would I want that, Krista? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I see you've got a lot of extensions. Why flutter it with one more extension? You ready for the power of this? Yeah. I'm gonna jump over into YouTube finding some great content Ooh. for my students. And I hear that there's not gonna be any ads coming up soon. Um, when you integrate your videos through Edpuzzle. Okay. Can I do anything to sing the song again? No, please. Okay. Nope. Um, so when we look here, we've got this YouTube video up. I'm wanting it for my students to not only watch it, but also for me to get some of their feedback, their responses, their thinking as they're watching it. Check out what's down here. What? Like can share. Yeah. Oh. We now have the edit with Ed puzzle button. Merry hey. Christmas, John. Merry Techmas. Merry Techmas to you Tecmas. too. And as soon as you click that, it opens it up inside of your Ed puzzle account. Say it ain't so. It's that easy? That easy. Oh my God. It allows me to, I can do some editing, cutting. I can just show certain clips of it. I can then go in and add voiceover. So maybe I want to talk over top of points and pause it and explain parts that are happening here. Oh no, John, what is this? Voiceover is now blocked. Yeah, because of the audio inside of YouTube and that sort of thing. Maybe they'll get cleared up with their partnership, but um, there are certain videos that will and certain videos that won't let you do voiceover. Anything you own, you can voiceover. Uh, and so take heart, Chris. Good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next option at the top is where you can go in and add your questions. So again, with this Edpuzzle extension, you're able to go directly to a YouTube video that you use for content with your students and bring it right into editing.
Yep. Uh, on the same note of voicing over not being available on this video, if you click in note right here, so as you're adding things, and we'll talk about how to edit Ed puzzles momentarily, um, there is that microphone button down below. And that microphone button will allow you to put some audio right here in a note for students so that the video will pause and they'll hear your voice injecting that some instructional content right alongside the video that they've been viewing. So that's what that microphone is. Chris to click the button. Now my voice lives there in 16 second version forever. Awesome. All right. Cool. Uh, so that's kind of a way of getting around the voiceover thing. Um, all right, Chris, so thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take control of the screen again and I'm going to share just a tab here for you. We're going to choose this one because what's awesome about this time of year is the hats. The hats. The hats. It is the hats. It's not going to rain outside. No, I'm thankful for this fireplace keeping me toasty in here on a day when the heat's out at SLC. So here you're going to see a wakelet. Wakelet's a really cool tool uh, for curating a lot of resources. You'll notice on this wakelet here, composed by LSR7 Hill ITS. Mr. Cam Hill, uh, that this is about using Edpuzzle with students, and there are all kinds of resources in here. Um, what is Edpuzzle? So if you didn't catch it on our webinar, you can go watch this. How to use the Edpuzzle school integration. There's all kinds of um, great resources here in these different content areas. So creating content, using with students, and if you keep scrolling over, you're going to see more and more. I'm going to share the link to this Wakelet. I that, just did, John. You just, I did it's that a one. Techmas miracle. Ooh. Awesome. Thank you, Krista, for doing that. This wakelet is yours. It's also going to be living in the professional learning course uh, inside of Schoology uh, alongside this recording as soon as we're done making it. All right. Awesome. So it's a gift that keeps giving. Yes, it is. With that, Krista, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to jump over into Edpuzzle itself. All right. So I've signed in through Google. I've verified my email address. Just like with Screencast-O-Matic, Tech my shout out to the last session we just did. Um, you're going to want to come in and check and be sure that you are a part of um, our school district. And it says pro school right here. Right? I would say as educators, we're probably all pro school. <laughs> um, but in this instance, pro school means that you have a pro subscription to Edpuzzle. So uh, you are an Edpuzzle pro. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, and yes, we are all pro school. It might say, it's gonna ask you some questions when you sign in. Go ahead and sign up under your building. Uh, go ahead and sign in to the grade level that you teach because what that's gonna do is it's gonna curate content for you uh, as you begin using Edpuzzle more and it's gonna suggest some things for you as you get going. So when you first land here, and Krista, by all means, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Well, I'm wondering what to do if the teacher signs in and they don't see that they're pro school go back to that unique link in our chat, which, Krista, you may copy paste that again since we're bringing it up. I might. Yeah. Um, that is our link and you'll sign in with Google and you'll, then you'll verify that email address. All right. But uh, thanks for asking that question. Mm -hmm. It just made more work for you. Got it. All right. When you dive into Edpuzzle here, this is what the dashboard looks like. All right. It lands you on this discover page. And I'll say this out of the gates. Edpuzzle is going to be the place where you go to create Edpuzzle content for students. Schoology is going to be the place where you assign that content to students and where students interact with that content. Students really don't need to go to edpuzzle.com, really ever, all right? Um, but you as the teacher, this is what you're going to see when you get onto edpuzzle.com. It lands on the Discover page. Uh, when I'm here on the Discover page, I'll see videos from my community, which uh, are people that I've used Edpuzzles from before. Uh, it's people that are in my network on occasion, um, but I'll see videos that are like recommended based on the grade level and the content area that I selected when I signed up. I can also filter those things right here. So if I wanted to say I'm looking for uh, a computer science lesson for 12th grade, sure, I like that suggestion. I can even filter um, oftentimes by language or by country of origin. And then where is this video from? Was it a YouTube video or was it maybe something that was hosted on Edpuzzle and it only exists there? I can filter all these things and then I can search and really curate this view and find videos that way using the filters. But I also have my network. Krista alluded to this in our intro. Your network is powerful because your network is anybody teaching the same curriculum as you in Lee Summit R7. And not just the same curriculum as you, but 
any other teacher in R7, you can go in and you can see what they're creating on Edpuzzle, and then you can copy that to your library, edit it with your own questions, preview it, and then you can go in and assign that to your students. So uh, that's the power of your network here. So if I scroll down just a little bit, we're gonna see great names of people in Lee Summit R7 on this video content. There's Colby. Some of those are in here right now. Kelsey. Kelsey. Lexi, right? And so you can see um, Rod and Jessica at the middle school level. Um, and there's Ty. We've got all kinds of great folks in here. But if I say, hey, Ty's got a really cool video on ancient Egypt, Shout out to Eastern Hemisphere. I guess it's now called Ancient Civilizations, maybe, is the name of the course. Is there a song for that one, too? Oh, lots. But look at this Ed puzzle right here. It's got a few questions in there. Um, and Ty created it. I can preview it right here. So I just click play and get to watch this. Anytime that a question pops up, I'm going to be able to go in and uh, see what the question is. Oh, brain pop video. Oh, it'll bring pop. If I like this. All I have to do to get this over to my library is click copy. Now I see some of you, the worried looks out there, Suzanne Wiley, you especially shouting out here. Sorry. I see the worried looks of, Hey John, there's an edit button over here and I don't want you to edit Ty's video. Well, good news. You see how it says edit and create your own version. When I click edit, it essentially does the same thing. It copies it to my library, but then it opens up the editor automatically. So it almost just saves me a click. All right, I don't actually edit Ty's video. Um, but uh, I go in here and really my options are edit and copy when I found somebody else's video that I like. What about the assign button, John? The assign button is not something you're gonna use from here because where are we assigning those videos, Krista? Schoology. Absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna click edit. It's gonna save me a step and made me a copy. Now it jumps me into the editor. Krista's taken you here before already. When I'm in the editor, I can trim the ends of my video. So I just do this like any video editor and I can slide these little sliders in and I can trim the end of the video. Sure. Pharaohs were the kings and queens of ancient Egypt. It's gonna start at a different point, right? Maybe I want to trim something on the ends of either video. I can add a cut if I want to trim something out in the middle of the video. So if I wanted to come in here and add this cut, I can do that. I can trim out the middle of the video as well. Um, I can then uh, click play. I'm gonna be paused every question. Notice when I click on a question, that's what these little tick marks indicate is the question. So this is a multiple choice question. Which type of ruler best describes the monarchy in ancient Egypt? All right. And it has the correct answers for me because I'm a teacher in edit mode. Kids aren't going to see those handy dandy green little arrows pointing at the right answers. All right. And so if I love this question, great. I'll click continue. If I want to change this question, I'll click the pencil. All right. Notice up top, I'm still in cut mode, right? Voiceover, see if it allows it on this video. Uh, oh, I better deal with my question, right? Continue. Oh, a monarchy is a... Is not allowed, that's okay. So I'll move on to questions. As Krista alluded to, I have three types of things I can do, I can insert that are gonna pause the video and they're gonna pop up to students as they're watching this content, keeping them engaged throughout the process of watching a video in class or out of class, right? If you a lot of folks use that puzzle for a flipped classroom model where you would assign your content to students, they deal with that in the evenings kind of as their uh, work at home. And then they come back to you during the day and they've got other content that they're maybe creating, communicating about, collaborating with others on uh, any of the four C's really in the classroom and you the teacher uh, work alongside those students to help guide them in their learning. And it's a little bit more of an individualized approach. That was a tangent. Here on questions, I can click multiple choice question. And so wherever I want to put one of these in, I just slide the slider. So there's not a question there. And I'm going to say, I want a question there. What is my question? Right? Good one. I don't yet know. And these are my answer choices. Um, trick question. There is no question. That, that, that's a terrible question to be asking students here. Um, but for the purpose of our webinar, this is how you create a question. I would go in and I'd say, the real answer is I don't yet know what question I'm asking. This is a, detract, a distractor right here. And that's my question. Notice right here where my cursor is at the 28 second mark. With it's going to be a question that students are then asked to answer in the process of watching this video. Now, John, I also noticed it said it would be automatically graded. 
It did say that? It said that underneath it when you were building your question. Oh, that's incredible. That's what's awesome about multiple choice, true, false questions. I also see up here, it says it's saving automatically. So there is no save button to go back and forth. So yay for automation. Yay. All right. Um, this is how you create questions in Edpuzzle. Oh, I want to say free continue. working people like. And uh, open-ended questions work much the same, Krista. Can Edpuzzle grade open-ended questions? It cannot grade open-ended questions. Can you go ahead and click on open-ended? I would love to. Let's make a fake one. Mm -hmm. Notice also down at the bottom, currently turned off, allow audio responses. Um, that's a great option to turn on so that students, instead of having to type in their answer, they now can just click the microphone and record their answer for you. When you are going back and looking at this Ed puzzle, you can listen to each student's response. Notice the tip down there, encourage critical thinking. Check your students' responses and score their answers when they complete the video. All right, perfect. And we're going to turn audio responses on. So uh, again, accessibility is something we promote in each of these tools here. Edpuzzle is an accessible tool because a lot of times videos will include closed captioning. Here I allow for audio responses. So students, rather than typing a response, especially our younger learners, can come in here and they can record with their voice their open-ended response. All right. Um, so, so I've asked a question, we've turned this on, I'm going to click save, and yes, we are encouraging critical thinking. Absolutely. Okay. So, like farmers. there's our open end. right there. Students will uh, have the opportunity to answer. And you know, I, I'm thinking here as we go, uh, that you guys probably would like to experience an ad puzzle as I'm creating here for you. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the chat. This is uh, a shared preview of a digital citizenship lesson. In fact, Edpuzzle has all kinds of content created in what are called Edpuzzle originals, and digital citizenship happens to be one of those topics. So here we are in our editor. I'm going to be done with this video. I'm going to click finish up top. All right. And that video has now been edited. My questions are saved. It is in my content. Notice it has my name under here now as the uh, creator of this Edpuzzle. And so then I can jump back really on this left hand menu. And I can come down um, to my classes, and that's where if I didn't have an LMS, I would assign stuff. All right, but we do have an LMS, Krista. Schoology. Schoology. So when I'm doing this, um, I'm going to actually jump in and share Schoology just for a moment here. So I've created an Edpuzzle. That's what we said Edpuzzle.com is for, is creating Edpuzzles. Finding those videos on YouTube, finding them in Edpuzzle. You, you can even bring in, I didn't show this, I needed to. Let me share this. Um, we're jumping back. All right. On All the surprises. I know. Merry Yeah. Um, in Edpuzzle, if I click into the Add Content button, I can upload a video here. So if it's something I own, maybe I've created in Screencast-O-Matic, I can drop that MP4 right here, and I can layer in um, questions for both accountability purposes and for engagement and for formative assessment of my own content. So it's my video, and now I'm layering questions on it, right? Um, I can record a video straight from here also. Did you know that when you're on oh, any tab right here, we'll go back to Schoology, this Edpuzzle extension that you had us load earlier, if I'm on a different page, not YouTube, I click right here, and I, it's a screen recorder. I can record oh. the tab, the desktop, the camera only, and I can make a video that it's going to toss into Edpuzzle to layer with those questions and that engagement. All right. So a couple of little fun things right there. Um, we are going to instead get out of this and show you how to integrate Edpuzzle with Schoology. Once you've created a lesson, here's what you'll do. You're going to come into Schoology. I am in a course. My course is this course I uh, called using Edpuzzle with students. It has a couple different sections because that's important for secondary teachers who link their sections. When I'm in here, all I'm going to do to uh, integrate Edpuzzle is I'm going to click on add materials and then I'm going to come over here to the right hand side where it says Edpuzzle. That easy? That easy. The integration is built. It's there for you. When I click on Edpuzzle, it's, a, it's important to read when you're doing these things on computers. Um, critical thinking, right? It says, I'll set you're about to create a class on Edpuzzle. This is making that class for you and syncing it with Schoology. So the description here is optional. I don't have to put a thing there. Instead, what I'm going to put in is that I teach, in this instance, we'll say seventh grade, and we're going to call this history, right? So social studies, and I'm going to create the class. It's that easy. Grade, what the class is about, and notice it drops me into my Edpuzzle. Here's that video that I just created. 
All right, I can click on it. If I need to preview it from here, I certainly can. All right, but I trust that it has the content that I just put in there. I click next. Now I can prevent students from skipping ahead, which is beautiful. And I can even turn on closed captions if they're available. So again, accessibility, and all I do is click assign and bada bing, bada boom, you have a material inside of your Schoology course. However, do students have to go to Edpuzzle? They never will have to go to Edpuzzle. Never have to go to Edpuzzle. Time, no. Okay. However, so here's my material. A lot of teachers stop at that. Don't stop there. Instead, there's one additional step required, and that's coming in and editing this material. And there's a very important little checkbox. That very important little checkbox is this one, enable grading. Notice you saw in my puzzle had 12 questions. They were all auto grading. So I click 12 points, one point per question. I'll give it a date as my Schoology Hub expectations would indicate me to do. So that's actually due today, Krista. You better make sure you get that done. Don't forget your category. Oh, and don't forget to get, thank you very yep. much. Um, I just made this class. So I'm gonna make a new category right here. We'll call this one Ed Puzzles. All right or practice or whatever you're going to call a category. I'll click save changes. So that very important step was clicking the checkbox, enable grading so that my grades know how to get back to my um, back to my grade book in Schoology. In Schoology. Krista, when we're here, as a teacher jumps in to look at this, I click on it. Notice I'm in here. I've got a full screen option. It allows me to see my content that I've assigned. My students are all going to show up here. And one thing that I wanted to highlight is please, 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 especially secondary teachers or any teacher with linked sections in Schoology, never ever use that button right there. Don't do it. That button breaks your integration. What it really does is it makes a new class for you in Edpuzzle, and then Edpuzzle doesn't know exactly what content to give your students or where to send their grades. So that drop down that we're used to using, just don't. But John, it just says hour one. I know you have hour one and hour two. Mm -hmm. All of your students are going to show up when you scroll down here. All of your students from hour one and hour two are going to show up in one big list there. You're exactly right. So I can see Edpuzzle right here inside of Schoology. Thank you for pointing that out, Krista. If I go full screen, all my students show up in one big list. If I want to look back and find a grade, where's the best spot to do that? Schoology Gradebook. The Schoology Gradebook. So I'd come over here. Remember, I told you it's going to send the grade straight back from Edpuzzle into the gradebook. And now, I see my ancient Egypt assignment here. It's going to have all my students listed there. And, and if I you can go to hour two, now I can go to hour two and use the drop down. And there I'm going to see students and how they scored on the set puzzle. If I'm looking for more specific feedback just inside the material itself. I can go and I can look by question how my students responded. I can look at the assessment by student. I can also look at it by question and how my students are doing on, the, on these questions. So great for reteaching, great for knowing where your students are at. That's the point of formative assessment. Yep. So that uh, when it comes time to prove what they know, um, your students know what they know, you know what they know, and it's a surprise to no one. The only tricky part is make sure you're not selecting the different sections when you're looking at your course. Yep, do not use that drop down if you have it. Oh, I John, guess you're I, frozen. I, uh, no, I just didn't share that tab. Oh. There we go. So. Thanks for that, Krista. Man, I, I was doing some great instructing without that tab visible. It, he was looking amazing on this side. Perfect. In the chat, I'm going to go ahead and drop in um, a support document for you when you go to set up your Edpuzzle in Schoology integration. And that just kind of walks through how to set it up. So just a reminder for the things that we talked about, the creation of your Edpuzzles happens in Edpuzzle, and then you assign it from within Schoology. Perfect. Um, ever been in class, Krista, with students and some of them forgot their materials, namely uh, like headphones at home? That happens. All right. That does happen. That happens. And here's where Edpuzzle gets even cooler. All right. Right here inside of Schoology, so this same assignment we just put in our course, there is what's called live mode. Live mode, what it does, your students are still going to use their devices, but instead we're all going to watch this video together on the IFP. And so live mode allows you to not only get that formative assessment data from your students, but you can also pause the video, have a discussion with your students in class. So it becomes less of an isolated experience with students focusing only on their devices. Instead, it becomes using technology while you're also communicating interpersonally. Absolutely. Because when the questions pop up, students are still able to answer it individually on their device. And as a teacher, as a class, we can analyze, talk about, have those conversations about the answers as they populate up on there. Beautiful. Amazing. Awesome. And I did want to share one last thing, Krista. Back here in Edpuzzle, I talked about Edpuzzle Originals. We talked about Edpuzzle Originals. 
When you click here on the dashboard at Puzzle Originals right underneath uh, Discover, you can get into any curricular area. You can click on it and you can then uh, type subsets of that curricular area. And we can go in and we can explore further and you find all of these Edpuzzle originals created by Edpuzzle that you can then copy to your library, edit to put your spin on the content on there for your students and then assign to kids through Schoology. So that's Edpuzzle. It's a stinking awesome integration. So happy we had Techmas to talk about it. Absolutely. If you are looking to go back and find more resources, I put the Wakelet link over in the chat as well as getting ready to put in the professional learning course link, if I can get that for you, um, directly back into the Schoology professional, professional learning course. Um, there's one in here completely on, oh, let me see if I can get this in here. Talk to John while I'm typing. Sure will. Can't have that error. No. So, Chris, so thank you for doing that. If you have your phone out and you wanna scan these QR codes, you're welcome to, uh, it's tinyurl slash techmas with a capital T, 2022. And that will take you to the professional line course. You can watch this fun recording again and again and again, or you can go to the uh, Wake Up Ed Puzzle and you can then uh, dig in some more. There's a really cool article on there, lots of cool stuff on there, but um, where you can like app smash and you can mix and mash like Flip or Flipgrid with Ed Puzzle. And there's just all kinds of really cool things. So awesome. yeah, hey, thanks for joining us for Techmas. You guys are incredible people. And we're so happy to have had you. Appreciate you guys. Yes. Merry Techmas, Kristen. Yeah. Merry Techmas, y'all. We'll talk thank to you guys you, soon. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Have fun. See you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Bye-bye.